the whole core of my message is if we farm like nature does, we can have a win-win situation. We can have our cake and ice cream. And the, the whole thing is the less we disturb the soil system, the more we mimic it and, the, and, and we follow its ecological principles that it's teaching us, we can save nutrients, we can save energy, we can have clean water, we can have healthy animals and healthy people. The whole thing what I'm trying to get across is healthy soils lead to a healthy soil ecosystem and it helps the landowner be sustainable. Yes, it's, I have devoted myself to this passionately because I am a recovering soil destroyer. I myself had a small farm and did not understand how my soil functioned. And I could not help my, my neighbor who farmed 600 acres next to me. He went broke because he didn't know how his soil functioned. Majority of his inputs, his costs, were on pesticides and fertilizers. And it he could not pass the farm to the next generation because he did not know how his soil functioned. He was not working with the system, he was working against the system. So my whole passion is let's work with the system and capture all its synergies that it provides for us. That's my passion. That's why I'm trying to convince about soil health. That's why I get so excited about it. The most important part I learned from college was the chemistry and the math. But in reality, it taught me um, reduction of science. It taught me science in little pieces. I did not connect the whole dots. I didn't see the holistic view of how everything works together. So in reality, I, I missed quite a bit because I didn't get to see, I didn't understand how the whole picture worked together. So what I learned in school that is that when I went to agriculture school was that a pest was a hideous thing. A weed was a, a horrible thing. That um, the weed needed to be sprayed, it needed to be dissed, it needed to be burned, anything to get rid of the pests. And uh, gene splicing, all these other tools to get rid of these pests. But it didn't teach me that these pests, or weeds, or insect problems are indicators of too much ecological disturbance. So I, I missed the point. The, these are all indicators of too much physical, chemical, and biological disturbance. By, by doing a lot of reading from, from ecologists, I begin to understand that weeds are indicators. They're like, they're like a scab, really. is If you get a cut, the scab, the, the body starts forming a scab, so it starts healing. Well, weeds are the same thing. Do the same. The, the soil does the same thing. They start scabbing. They start covering and protecting themselves by weeds. They form this scab, and weeds are indicators of too much physical disturbance. Nature wants to cover itself. It's not. It's a strange thing for nature to be uncovered. So weeds are really a scab of the land. They they try to start the healing process. And that's also a, a sign of the secondary secession going on, that nature wants to go towards that direction. It wants to heal itself and cover itself. Yes, uh, the reason I like farming nature's way is because I think that's the goal that we want for our farmers to go, is to farm nature's way. Uh, nature's already set the template. Let me give you an example. Like uh, The thing that's beautiful is if you watch the forests, the forests don't till themselves up. They, uh, the organic matter builds up on them. Uh, the soil is never disturbed. They're always covered. Same thing in the, in the grasslands. The same principle. The soil's always covered all the time. And so the, the, the reason I like the concept of farm nature's ways is because we're maximizing on all the synergies that nature provides. Because there's a lot of biological energy that we can, that we can capture instead of bringing uh, chemical inputs. And as chemical inputs become more expensive, become more limited, uh, we want to capture nature's way of farming. And that's why I love that concept, farming nature's way. Just tell us that again. Well, a couple of, a couple of years ago, we had a, a real interesting event happen. Fertilizer became $1,000 a ton. And, and that to farmers, 
really put a fright to them. He says, well, where am I going to get the, the money to pay for this fertilizer? And, and farmers are starting to look for answers. And for years after years, you know, uh, they farmed a certain way with high inputs. But when as inputs started going higher and higher and their profits were still the same or less, farmers started looking around and many of us out there, there's this movement through the country where people are realizing, you know what, if we farm nature's way, we do the things the way she does it or the way nature does it, uh, we start saving in inputs. The things that's amazing to me is that people are using the no-till drill, using diversity, 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 cover crops, tying in the grazing systems with the cropping systems. We're finding out that some of these landowners are reducing have reduced their fertilizer use by 90%, their herbicide use by 75%. Farmers are ready to hear that kind of message. And the beauty about it, it requires less time. That's the neat thing, it requires less time. So it's a win-win situation for the farmers. And that's what I get excited about it because farmers are saying, look, I have this holistic view now that I can tie all these systems together and have them work for me instead of work against them. And so there's a, there's a lot of excitement about that, and I'm excited about it too. The beautiful thing about, I love about the, the, the no-till concept is that it takes a lot of energy to disturb the soil. It takes a huge amount of diesel to move the tillage equipment. It takes a lot of time. What I love about the concept, again, coming back to nature, the no-till drill plants the seed but it doesn't disturb the soil surface. So the landowners, they put their seed and they, and the, with the no-till drill and, they have, and it saves them huge amounts of time. And they place the seed and it doesn't disturb the, pro, uh, the ecosystem processes of what the soil does for us. And so it, like, it protects the habitat. I use this example all the time, is that if this tillage is like somebody coming to your house and knocking the house down with a bulldozer, and then if you say, well, I put manure on, well, that's like throwing pizza after your house has been destroyed. You say, okay, I've destroyed your home. Now I'm going to throw a bunch of pizza at you, fix it. It took years and years to build that home. It takes a long time to build the soil, soil ecosystem. And then when you till it, it's like knocking that house down and then saying, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put manure and residue. It takes energy to do that. But the no-till system, it doesn't do that. It, it captures that energy and it saves energy. So it's, it's a beautiful system because it doesn't create disturbance. And the thing about farming is it's limiting disturbance, physical, chemical, and biological disturbance. And I thought that was a really profound thing a professor told me. Farming's nothing less than managing disturbance. Recently, we had a, um, some people from Kentucky come, came down to visit Ray. One was a professor from uh, at the, at the university in Kentucky, uh, Extension Service, and then we have a soil quality specialist from NRCS, John Graham. They came to visit Ray because I had been talking to the soil quality specialist about uh, Ray's soils. And so what they did is they wanted to see where Ray's soils were at. So they came and sampled and took a sample. And they sampled his no-till field, and the soil sample came up to 2.75% organic matter, and his wooded area was 3% organic matter. The typical organic matter in these Piedmont soils is less than 1% in typical uh, conventional till systems. When I heard about that, I was so excited about it because we've been talking about mimicking nature. And here is Ray farming like nature, where the wooded area was 3% organic matter, which is a fantastic indicator of soil health, and his fields were 2.75. The neighbors are less than 1%. The people from Kentucky were astonished at the percent of organic matter that was in the soil system. So I was, we were very excited about that. 